Hey boys and girls. Let's get into it. Uh, hmm. Well, I want to thank you. Uh, I'm Truis Armor. This is Armor Intergalactic, where we discuss all things. I'm alone today. Uh, normally, uh, I have, uh, I gotta stop saying, uh, normally I have a guest or two. Uh, T and uh, the Honorable Philosophy, and uh, it's a little too late for them. It's 12.30 Saturday morning or Sunday night, depending on if you're still out. Let's get into some stuff that I just kind of scribbled down as so as not to meet my, miss my deadline for Friday shows. T today was a Today was a day. All right. Ooh, man. There are several things that I was uh, looking at today. One was this Trump administration and this children ban. I feel bad for the kids, but at the same time, the government has been splitting up families forever. And they've been showing this really sad picture of this little girl outside of Border Patrol crying her little pink shirt and her little pink shoes and she's crying and it breaks your heart. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to break your heart. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. I feel bad for them. I do. I feel, I feel bad for them. But at the end of the day, Everybody who's having a struggle in Mexico just can't go, well, the hell with Mexico, I'm going to America because, because I want to. You got to come through the proper channels, right? So having said that, the people who go, well, fuck the proper channels. And then they bring their kids with them and you end up with this picture by John Moore of Getty Images, a two-year-old Honduran girl cries as her mother, who seeks asylum, is detained at the southern border near McAllen, Texas, in June. I mean, and of course, I have to I'm looking at uh, an NPR link written by uh, Richard Gonzalez, of course. You know, so he's going to put this, I don't want to accuse him of being unbiased, but American media is a joke. So I think, how can I phrase it without getting, in, getting into any trouble with anybody? Let me grab my unity spear. <laughs> it's got no name, it's just a circle. Uh, yeah, it's, I think a lot of this has begun to have people who have a dog in a fight write proactive articles or what is the opposite of proactive? <laughs> uh, you know, they either do hit pieces or, or puff pieces for you. Everything is a soldier coming home or the most evil you've ever seen in your life until the next evil shows up on your 6 o'clock news in two days. But I got to tell you, this little girl crying, it kicks you right. I mean, look, you must not have... You must not have... A, I'm not going to say a soul, but any compassion. If you can't look at this picture, and there's two of them. Not in this one, but there's, there's another one that's just, it's going to win a Pulitzer. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking. But having said that, you just can't have everybody come here. Mexico the failed state. Let's not, let's not get it wrong. People flee Mexico because the cartels are in control of Mexico and the government is a joke. And they've been at war with Mexico since... I want to say I was, I want to say 15, maybe, I think probably later. I think I'm getting my government incursions uh, mixed up. I know that Russia, where is my phone? Russia had a uh, an incident where they had tanks bomb their parliament, but that was because of a coup. Uh, 
Mexico had cartel members kill judges, bribe police off. I mean, they went all in. I, and what I remember watching it, I was thinking, they're doing stuff that people who want to control the country do. They just don't want to control the country. Their whole position was, we don't care who you are. <laughs> Essentially, it wasn't, we want control of the country, we want to run people for office. We want a better deal, you know, leave us alone and let us sell drugs. It wasn't any of that. It was just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. So since then, I think Mexico, the people who control Mexico, mind their P's and Q's around the cartels. And I think the cartels run the place. And I'm not the only one. I think the State Department says so, too. There's perpetual don't go to Mexico statements in their briefings. And people always go to Mexico, you know, and that's Mexico. I mean, this young lady was from Honduras. God, she's got to be like three years old. It's heartbreaking. She's crying. Oh, I feel bad for her, her mom, the life they, they're leaving behind, the life they hope to get. What, you just can't, I mean, she's she's got some notoriety now because you feel bad for her. So what, you let her stay? Then the next people who want notoriety does what? She comes over with, you know, delivers babies in the, Border Patrol van, and that becomes a streaming of not a streaming event, good lord, but a uh, a trending event, and then before you know it, someone else is out doing. You know, humans. You know, if I go, oh man, I could climb that hill. Someone else will go, oh yeah, I'll climb that mountain, and then someone else will fly over them out and then before you know it, it's it's a it's an arms race to to one up people and it happens with crime too like the baddest dude on the block is like hey i'll punch all the guys and and beat them all up i'm the meanest and then the next dude will come through i'll punch all the guys beat them up and punch all the girls i'm the meanest and the guy goes, wow wow he'll punch girls i'm not you know and then the next guy goes well i'll kick babies right and it's, essentially the metaphor is women are not off limits. I will do deal darkly with them. And then another guy goes, oh yeah, well I will deal darkly with the women and the children. And then before you know it, I'm dealing darkly with the women and the children and I'm shooting at the cops. And the whole point is that dude is the baddest dude because he will take it to the limit. And, and that's what it is. So we have gang members who what is it? What are they? MS-13? And, uh... The government wants all of them out, which I guess makes sense to an average working people, right? So if they go... And they have family members who are following the law and busting their ass, trying to get ahead. I don't know, man. This whole thing is just silly. But I know you can't fix it with an open border. You know, this is an argument of how come people keep stealing my stuff, and I'm using stealing, not saying the Mexicans are thieves, but I'm just saying, how come people keep stealing my stuff? I bought this new water bottle, and I bought this new phone, and I bought this new pen. How come it's all gone? And people will tell you, uh, before you can secure all that stuff, you have to lock your front door. And you're like, I don't need to lock my door. And then the next day, oh, the new phone that I bought today is going why does this keep happening and i go again you know you probably need to lock that door and you're like Wah! i trust my neighbor i don't need to lock my door i'm god's soldier and i love everybody okay don't lock your door and then the next day wow like that new iphone that i this is the fifth iphone i had this week and it's only thursday <laughs> you know like lock the door and then, unless you lock that door people are just going to keep Cruising through, baby, baby, like they own the place, hiring these shifty American lawyers who will take money from fucking Hitler himself to spit on an American president. That's that's where we are now. Speaking of American presidents, who we in this this uh this topic, this young woman is just it's heartbreaking. Uh, but yeah, I would say let her and her mom in, lock everybody else out. And right until the next one tugs at my heartstrings. Look, we should have some empathy. Empathy is important in the human animal. We should have some sympathy. Sympathy is important in the human animal. 
all this go fuck yourself, fuck these people, they're all mongrel this and da da da. We've heard from these people. They don't like blacks, they don't like Jews, they don't like women, you know, they don't like immigrants, they don't like anything. They just they came here from a foreign place and they did not become American. And that is what I worry about these people. Cause like I said on these podcasts before, I have been called nigger not just by white people, but by Indian people. And yeah, it gets it it'll get out of control fast. And I think a lot of black people are where I'm at. It's kind of like, why bother? You know, I once had a fight. Tried to step away from this fight in front of a full street of civ- uh, civilians. In front of a full street of people. I get into this fight with this guy. This woman sergeant rolls up and arrests us both. Because she's not trying to solve anything. She sees a black guy and a Spanish guy. And we're both guilty. So fuck us. And that's that's what you get. So it's like, if I'm going all in, I'm all in. And I think a lot of dudes feel that way. So I'm not I, I'm not a I'm not trying to I'm a fighter. I'm not a, trying to fight you. But if I have to fight you, I'm doing as much damage as I can as fast as I can, and I'm ghost. I'm not trying to talk to an idiot judge. I think they're all fucking morons. They keep racism around. They let these bankers run amok. I think the lawyers are the problem. And not all of them. I think. Like, this is my opinion. I don't need to be sued by anybody. But, like, Michael Cohen is not a lawyer. You know, he's got a law degree. But is he a lawyer? You know, they call him a fixer. What does that mean? So, you under my thinking, you can have a fixer who's a cop. Don't worry about this speeding ticket. Don't worry about your son harassing that girl or your daughter. Fighting that girl or your cousin or whatever, however you're connected. It ceases to be about justice anymore. But black people have been telling you this, haven't we? Yeah, so congratulations. You're all niggas now. Let's move on. I wanted to find... Good sweet Jesus. Uh, Real quick. (laughs) All right. So Nikki Haley goes to the, uh, the U.N., and uh, she essentially puts a kibosh on anything Israel, uh, any oversight of Israel. Israel is kind of a dark nation. I'm telling you, if you throw rocks at them, they airstrike you with <laughs> weaponry that we gave them. We gave it to them. I mean, we have there's technology that we we spent years developing, and we just hand it over to them. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, there are people you can't criticize in America. And Jews are one of them. So I won't be criticizing Jews because I know I'm not allowed to. Uh, However, Israel, give me a freaking break. I mean, the barbarity is just sort of, sort of biblical, right? And uh, they're doing stuff that we say is zealotry for the Muslims. So this is a black centric show and I'm essentially talking to black people. I love everybody to listen. But uh, I listen to enough uh, white-centric shows and learn a bit. Maybe you can learn something from this. Um, every, every, everyone, um, most people in America are from Europe. Uh, they fly a ton of European flags here. They talk like America is a, is a suburb of some foreign municipality. And uh, I think that's, this is more it. Uh, I think some countries inflame the racial issues so they can have support here right so let me give you a wild example um one group came joined the police force and became an asshole to all these other groups that's how they came up one group came began banking here became robbed and became an asshole to other group that's how they came up and you see this in some families right some family look in the 80s the crack epidemic do not think people did not make a ton of cake off the crack epidemic. Do not think they all went to jail. The Rockefellers, not the Rockefellers, the uh, Kennedys uh, were smugglers, essentially. They, they, if, this was, if the Kennedys rose up in the 80s, they'd have been in the crack business, right? They'd have been shooting people and blowing people up. I tell people this all the time. If you listen to me, you're a bad dude. First of all, congratulations on being a bad dude. You got more balls than I do. I couldn't fuck with being a bad dude. Uh, too much empathy. I fucking care. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, but if you're a bad dude, 
you'll likely have kids and you want them not to be bad dudes. And that's generally the way it works. You do the bad stuff, the gunplay, the selling drugs, the running from the cops, so your kids can have a better day. We are at a point now where it's so glorified, people just want to ride it out. They just want to be uh, a bad guy forever. And it's, it's, a, it's a bad move. Look, if Dr. King was around today and he came through your set, you'd better like drop a whole bunch of money on him and some security, you know what I mean? And I, I'm, I'm talking about the only person that we still to this day believe was a transformative figure in the American black diaspora, right? As well as the American black life, right? Uh, quintessentially American black life. I'm not talking about, the, I'm like the diaspora de definitely, but the American black life is a, is a unique thing to black folk, quite frankly. Um, and people come here from other places who are black. It's a it's a very different vibe to to grow up in the pressure cooker. You have to go, I call it the ghettos of heaven, right? I, I mean, New York City is the the jewel of the world, right? I speak the number one language, right? The lingua franca of the world. This is it. And uh, let's let's get our history right. So it's twenty eighteen. So let's say eighteen. Let's say 1840, all right? Who was the the lead nation? I think, I want to say it was Germany. It might, it might have been, but I want to say it was Germany. Um, then it became England, right? England became the, uh, the, the, the language, the lingua franca, the language that everybody speaks, the language of business, the language of, of commerce wasn't always English. I think it was uh, a thousand years ago, it was Latin, right? Um, then I think it was German. Then it became English because of the English Empire, not because of the Americans. Uh, but it might have been French. Because at one point in the mid-1800s, France was uh, the capital of the world. Uh, I want to say it was German. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was France. I forget the year. Uh, I want to throw Germany in there. Uh, but then it became America. And it became America somewhere... Around the, th I want to say the 20s, the 30s, it, it sort of became official. But yeah, it wasn't it wasn't overnight, right? Um, and it became America, I think, largely due to Edison. Edison was a monster with his brain power, and once you put lights up every place, people could work longer in their office hours. You know, they could do all these interesting things, and yeah. At one point, it was Italy, right? The Renaissance. That was the place. That was the place to be. So, yep. Sort of lost my train of thought on the lingua francas and the places to be. Um, speaking of places to be, let's talk about the media for a little bit. Uh, Donald Trump had a presser. <laughs> You know, I got to tell you, I didn't vote for Donald Trump. He's He's been everything I wanted. You know, my whole position on Hillary Clinton was, how dare you, quite frankly. I was just so tired of her and her, her fake concern, right? Uh, and you can see when people get angry who they really are. Uh, you know what I mean? Um... So you get her angry and she's dismissive and sort of put out by your questioning of her, which tells you she's not a politician so much as she's a, a celebrity who's in politics. Um, I've been involved in politics my whole life. I remember watching Ronald Reagan debate, uh, not Ronald Reagan, um, Uh, who was it? Debate Jimmy Carter. I want to say it was Ford, but it might, I don't, it, I think it might have been Ford. Um, yeah, debate Jimmy Carter. It was, I didn't really know what they were talking about, but I remember getting a vibe that I liked one more than the other, <laughs> as kids do. 
Um, but since then, you know, I'm proud to salute the flag and do all that stuff because I believe in this country we are unique to other countries and we have to to work at this. I think other people come here, fly their foreign flag, get foreign bank accounts and all this shit out the country and when the place falls, they're out. And I think a lot of those people are in Congress or in the media because I think they're selling you... Look, the media makes money whether you jump into that pond and save that baby that footage is worth it. Or you jump to that pond and you and that baby both drown. That footage is still worth it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they like to have you on their morning show and talk about what a hero you are. But they'd just be happy. They'd, bleh, they'd be just as happy to have your wife on the show talking about the man you used to be. You know, they're going to get their bones off this anyway. Um. So this presser with Donald Trump. Whoo! They were hot. They were hotly disrespectful. Um, yeah, one the one woman on uh, NBC. I want. I, she doesn't even call him Mr. President. She calls him Mr. Trump. Uh, she's. I, I think in his face, she calls him Mr. President because she's allowed to be on the White House lawn. But every other thing out of her mouth is sort of snotty ridicule of Mr. Trump, like. He's, he's not really the president. And I'm like, man, they, they, you know, I think they're treating him like he's a black kid in a crime case. Central Park jogger. I want to get into that. So the Central, for those of you who do not remember the Central Park jogger, let me refresh you. Central Park jogger case. There was a lady who was jogging in the park at like, I want to say... 10, 30, 11 at night, something like that. Uh, a whole bunch of black kids, about 14, 15, 16 in Central Park, running around being knuckleheads as kids will be, white ones, black ones, Asian ones, don't matter. The, you know, especially boys. Boys like to get together and I'm the toughest, I'm the toughest. I can climb the biggest tree. I can wrestle the biggest alligator. I can do all types of dumb stuff and when I fail everybody goes look at him boys ridiculousness I'm surprised he's not dead you know all that kind of stuff women live longer yeah women don't do as much stuff as men you know went to the moon for God's sakes that's sort of just kind of like what you can get a group of men to do right at his best uh, at his worst you know you can see men who are complete strangers rape and kill a woman on a bus in India. You know, it's just kind of that kind of weird energy that men have. So I, I'm always for for tapping into energy, especially men's energy, and building something great. I'm also for tapping into women, women's energy and uh, I don't know what women do. I don't, I don't, I don't know what women need, quite frankly. Uh, so, yeah. So, this Central Park jogger case, she's, uh, jogging. She is attacked and beaten badly, like, almost dead and raped. And the cops grabbed these kids, these five kids. They said they beat her up. They were, they said they were robbing people in the park. They, uh, beat up people. And then they found her and they all beat her up and raped her out of, you know, that was a narrative. The media, whoo, ABC, NBC, and CBS. I grew up in New York City, and I was afraid. My parents were afraid for me and my little brother because there's always the media giving a, sort of a green light to the populace to sort of go in, and they did. They called them animals. They called them a wolf pack, referred to them as animals, you know, just kind of like this savage animalistic like, like the niggers are loose and they're running around. Oh, they're going to get your white girls. That kind of antebellum bullshit that these people always whip out. It's not even dog whistle stuff. It's, it's, it's out and out racial language. And Donald Trump during this time put an ad in, I'm going to say the all three papers, but it might've just been one. It might've been the times, 
or the post, but uh, he put an ad in the paper calling for the death penalty, and everybody was like, yeah, 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 kill him, kill him, kill him. Fast forward, baby, baby, because all things will be known, as someone once told me, and I was like, all things, all things, all things? He's like, all things. I was like, really? Really, really? Really, really, really? Uh, so yeah, all, all things will be known, and it turns out that some psycho nut job Spanish dude was on a, a, a I hate women kick and he was just running around and raping and murdering. It was just ridiculous. And he attacked this woman and beat, I mean, almost crashed her whole face in. I think, I want to say with a cinder block. But yeah, then they turned out, you know. They thought he was a liar. He was in jail anyway. He wasn't going to ever get out, so he confessed to it. And they thought he was a liar. And then he told them stuff that only the... the I'm about to keep calling him killer. He, he didn't kill her. All of the stuff only the ultra-violent, sick old nut job of a racist, racist, rapist would know. And then they were like, yeah, well, they, they helped him. They must have... And now the question becomes, why would five kids who don't know a guy happen upon a rape, a violent, ugly, nasty rape, and then partake in it? Hey, we got nothing else to do. The movie doesn't start for 40 minutes. Let's help this wild stranger rape this woman that we don't know, that we stumbled across in the bushes, because, what, we got 20 minutes? I mean, this is the logic that they put you away for 30 years on. You know, and that was able to be done because the New York media, the place that is the jewel of the world, New York City, where all media flows through, it is, and they they did it. They did it blatantly and arrogantly. And they did it with their black reporters and their Spanish reporters and their white reporters. So when I hear them going on Donald Trump, I sort of just kind of go, huh. Should I remind them of the bullshit? Because when Donald Trump says you're fake news, he ain't lying. He really isn't. They, I mean, normally I think people of Donald Trump status get way better treatment from the media and the police than the average black kid. But in this case, I think they're they're openly hostile. They're 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 Clintonites. The whole place. Every time I cut my TV on, I see some Clinton reporter who either was at her wedding or married her. Or some other, and I'm just kind of like, how are you, how are you legitimate? How are you legitimate? One thing I will say about the Clintons, they put people all over the place. They really did. I was like, it's, it's, it ceases to be a nation of the people when you have all these factions putting people in government positions and leaving them there for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? They long ago took over this country. You can't run for shit. You definitely can't run for president. That's $2 billion. You know, you got Mitch McConnell crashing Barack Obama's Supreme Court pick. And people are acting like that happens every day. I thought it was treasonous. I think it's treasonous to mess with someone's vote. Every time someone takes my vote, your vote, any one of 300 and, what are we, 30-some million people vote? That's treasonous, but not with these guys in charge. It's just how they do business. So, yeah, I'm fully hoping that somebody comes in and locks everybody in Congress up. And have you all go, oh, my God, what happened to America? I am shocked and offended. Oh, heaven to Betsy. If you weren't fucking fucking around, blowing smoke up your own skirt, you would have saw what's going on. I mean, the cops are out of control. Why would you think that they would... and they're allowed to be out of control. Someone okays them to be out of control. Why would you think that they would only stay on one side of the street? Those laws saying black guys can't do this, that the society was so happy about, now they say the citizen can't do this. So they went from the 15% of us who are here now, maybe back then it was a smaller percentage, obviously, uh, to everybody. Yeah, so you're still living in a weirdly racist place. Now, those racist rules are controlled by oligarchs, and they sort of let you in or let you out. I see a lot of uh, approved nonsense from black people, like Jay-Z. Jay-Z made a billion dollars making the same album. And I think when this whole thing gets up and running and come together, he's going to have a lot of questions to ask. You know, why is it fine that other people's kids get shot at? 
but not yours. Explain it to us. So yeah, I'm one of those kids from the 60s. I remember those guys. I have respect for women, all women. I have respect for black women, but my whole flow recently is black women have got to be kidding me. I don't want to even know half of you because I think you don't have these sentiments. Your whole thing is I'm going to get this money. I'm going to get this paper. I hate this dude. So I'm going to call the cops on him. I was just actually outside. This dude got, I taped it on my phone. This dude got into it with the cops. I thought they were going to tase him or shoot him. It was very much like these trending videos, but you know what? I should put it up. The cops acted impeccably. And I think that's because they know in this environment, everybody's got a camera and everybody's looking at them. But the guy was an absolute knucklehead. And that cop would have been fully righteous if he crashed his skull in with his nightstick. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Oh, you want some of this? You want some of this? I was like, oh, you want... He's telling you to get on the ground. What are you doing? Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And then, before you know it, they're like, nine squad cars here to deal with you. And then, after they got him all cuffed up, he don't want to give him his name, da 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 Then he doesn't want to be put in the patrol car. Now you got to strong arm him to put him in the patrol car. Some people are fucking daffy. Daffy. I cannot tell you how many times I had to roll with people over nonsense. And then when they come down off of their bullshit, and when I say bullshit, I don't mean drugs. I mean, I'm like, I expect drugged out knuckleheads to fight me. It's up for, for uh these heroin guys who go into this heroin stupor where they just stand up and they're like, Ugh, and they drool and crap. They don't fight anybody. You could walk them any place. But these PCP guys who are super extra ridiculously strong and amped up and are in their own heads, maybe talking to elves or aliens, either or. <sighs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Let's get into some, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's go back to, to the media and sort of this migrant issue thing, right? Real quick. I think that'd be, that'd be it. So a young actress, uh, I, I normally don't give any fucks, oh, any chicanery about actresses. But uh, one of them was from Stranger Things. I'm a huge sci-fi guy. I love me some sci-fi. I love me some good old-fashioned space yarn. Uh, not space, but uh, not really spiritual. Like uh, what Bruce Campbell's, I forgot his show. What is the name of his show? Bruce Campbell's, well, not, it's not Walking Dead. It's not Left 4 Dead, but... Uh, Living Dead is, oh my God, you know what happens? Then, anyway, those of you who know sci-fi just slipped out of my head. Uh, super, super great movies. Uh, Evil Dead, the Evil Dead movies had an Evil Dead television show. Super great. Uh, I love me some Bruce Campbell. He, he, he does movie star right. He does movie star right. Um, so this young lady, Millie Bobby Brown, who was in Stranger Things is off Twitter because of a weird I want to make sure I understand this. So some somehow I think someone wrote on her page some wildness. Uh, I'm talking about something and I can't even tell you how it started. I, let me tell you where I'm at on it. All right, so she's off Twitter because racial and racist tweets have become have been people have been putting those on her on her page you know using her image and and attributing quotes to her so it'll be a picture of her uh standing under you know a what would you say there? good lord man um a picture of her standing next to a a tree and some, and it'll be her in this tree, and on it, it'll it'll say, uh, "Today was a really good day without black people." You know, they did thousands, of, not thousands, but like, yeah, they drove off with this. So, and I'm sitting here thinking, who 
does this to a child, famous or not. She's still, somebody told me she's 12 or 13, super more accomplished than me and 99% of my friends, right? She's a notable, world-known actress in a really good show. Why would you do that to her? These are the people that we deal with daily. I, like, I'm, I'm always telling uh, my white friends, you don't get it because you don't deal with these people like we deal with these people. And every now and then, something happens and everybody goes, huh? This is one of those things, you know? It's, they just decided to troll this 13-year-old girl. Chase off of Twitter. And then they defended themselves like, yeah, freedom of speech, you have every right to... And this is my thing about these media things. Are they, if they're utilities, the government should shut them down and take them over. Send the checks to whoever found them, but they shouldn't be in charge of them anymore. If they're not utilities, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same Zuckerberg, uh, Zuckerberg, excuse me. Um, you need to, you need to knock this shit off. All right. I, I have a couple of Facebook accounts. Uh, they all go back to my original account. So all these ghosts and these trolls who don't have only you can message them, but you can't friend them and all this nonsense with a picture of an eagle for a profile picture and a picture of, I don't know, a don't trade on me flag or a gun or all this other shit. You fuckers need to get shit together. Seriously, you cannot allow them to. I, I'll get an example. I hung out in a bar. Uh, I'm going to tell you the name of the bar. It's still there. Um... And it was a fun bar, pool table. We talked. Uh, it was a sports bar. We'd go there night, not nightly, but weekly to watch a Yankee game. It was a good time. And then idiots started showing up from the projects because it was a new bar. And in about six months, they all the cool people who used to go there stopped going there. They owned that bar. I'm a stubborn piece of shit. I was not going anywhere. I spoke to the owner. I was like, "Yo, they're selling cocaine in your bar. You better deal with this." And you better call the cops and have them raid your place so they know that you know. Because when they raid this place without you, they're going to assume you knew about it. They're going to shut your doors and, and assume, you know. So, get a hold of your business. People should not throw your, your flow off like that because you're afraid to deal. You ain't got a fist to cuff everybody. I know every man isn't a brawler. I'm not a brawler, but I'll fight you, but I'm not a brawler. I'm not a lover and I'm not a fighter. But I'm a fairly decent lover and a fairly decent fighter. That's that's where I'm a I'm a I'm a RC schlubby fuck. That's what I am. I like to paint. I like to draw. I like to think deeply by myself generally, and uh, yeah, right. So that's me. You, if you are, I'll fuck anybody. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. I'll fight, fight, fight. Great. Congratulations. But you need some other skills. So read a book too. Fight and read books. If you only like fighting, read books about fighting. You know what I'm saying? If, if fighting is your thing, make it your hobby. I tell my nephew who loves uh, marijuana. I'm like, it's going to be legal in 10 years. You might want to look into open up a dispensary if you like it. And this is where we are. You know, we don't open anything. Mind you, this is a Black Unity podcast. So if you're thinking about opening something, maybe you should take this from the hinterland of the Internet as a sign that the cosmos is going, yeah, Bill, Jane. Raheem, Tanya, Kim. Yeah, start your dispensary. Start your publishing house. Start your lawn and garden supply store. Just start it. Just start it. Everybody wants you to work for them. I want you to work for you, and I want you to make enough and go forego the giant fucking house. I mean, you can have a nice house, a nice, nice, nice house, but never have a house too big for you to clean. And that's the problem. You want a million people from Mexico in here cutting your lawn and cleaning your grass. Do that shit yourself and stop your crying. So, we covered kids, migrant kids sent here. In both ways, we feel bad that they're here. Not bad that they're here. We feel bad that their circumstances led them here. We feel bad that, well, we don't, I don't want to attribute anything. I feel bad that their circumstances led them here. I feel bad that they have very a hard 
a hard, hard road. But you just can't come here and stay. Somebody has to know you're here. I don't know. Somebody has to know you're here. You just can't come through and do what you want and stay and uh, make the place crazy. Plus, this is about resources. So if there's only 13 seats at the American table, 13 is a sacred number in America, black people have better get a fucking seat. Don't tell me that we're going to forego you to talk about the Mexicans. Don't tell me after that we're going to go forego you to talk about whoever the hell else you got. The Syrians, the, you know, I don't care. We've done a lot and now we should do something for ourselves. And if nobody wants to help us, quite frankly, I don't think anybody wants to help us. I wouldn't actually accept the help. But you know what? I got 20 minutes. Let's make this a good hour. Uh, the next few minutes, the next 20 minutes are going to talk about unity, how it, how it should go, right? So I started this thing for black men. I love black women, but yeah, this is for black men because I know some things that women don't really want you to know, right? Women think that men follow women, but no, we all follow the, the king and the king is who we follow. So, you can diva it up and talk all this noise. Uh, nobody's following the diva. And the diva is likely following the Don, right? So, my position of this unity thing is looking at it from the, the view of a soldier. I look at myself. If you could close your eyes and imagine what's going on here. Uh, in a giant field of us, I see all of us. And I'm in role number 48,609. Actually, 48 million. There's only 50 million of us here. Not even 47 some odd. All right, so let's say we're all lined up. I'm in row 9,000, right? Have to be in row 9,000. Because if this kicks off, there'll be uh, all these young people will reassess what unity and leadership looks like, right? Uh, I'm not for marching. I'm sick of marching. Um, I remember being dragged out to go to these marches when Dr. King uh, inspired all these people in the early 70s. He was dead by the time uh, I was, I want to say January, February, March, April. I was four months old when he died. Um, and I remember going to rallies. I remember there weren't really yeah, there were rallies. There weren't really marches. There were rallies. There were rallies. You'd go to a location and you'd protest and then you'd go home. Um, but nobody marched. There, there was only one march. There was a, the March on Washington. That was, that was it. I didn't read it. That we were poor people in Brooklyn. Nobody went to that. But the idea kind of like, you know, spread like wildfire. And now it's an it's a ember and a dying flame. I tell people all the time. The civil rights movement is over. It's over. You know, when you can sit up here and kill a nine-year-old in a park playing with a toy gun and people care more about gay people and their cake, it's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, so my idea is I am looking for a leader to lead me. Not to lead me out or to lead me over or to lead me through. Just to lead me. So I don't think that leader should be at the White House with the president doing any of that. I think that's just straight coonery, quite frankly. Everybody wants to use nigger. I like to use the word coonery because I see a lot of coonery happening here. Straight ton of it. And I think a leader would fix that. He'd go, uh, we're not going to buy X. We are, we're going to boycott Y. And... and 90% of the people would do it. And, excuse me, and those who wouldn't do it, the rest of them would go, what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't want to know. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to date you. I don't want to dance with you. I don't want to, I might fight you, but, but then if I fight you, me and all the other loyal motherfuckers are going to fight you. So, you know, maybe coonery looks good on you, but not for us, right? So then that guy knows where you stand, and then... 
you've set a tone. For instance, Colin Kaepernick. I put together a list. I can't find a list. That was supposed to be next week's show, but I can't find the list because I... I'm a hot mess, quite frankly. Um, it was him and like three other people. <laughs> I was kind of coming with 10 really good people who could lead us out. And it was him, number one. Uh, number two was blank. Number three was blank. Number four was blank. Number five was uh, Colin Powell with a asterisk. Age may preclude his service because <laughs> I'm that guy. Uh, six was blank. Seven was blank. Um, seven? No, seven wasn't blank. Seven was... Uh, Where's that list? Seven was... Uh, Oh, the the guy from uh, the speech at the BET Awards. I'm forgetting Jesse. Uh, I forget his name, but he was number seven because of of fame and that that speech, right? So you, if you can galvanize people, maybe he can do it more. And I was like, all right. Um, but my idea, and uh, who's nine and ten? Um, Barack Obama was number ten. Uh, as an honorable mention, quite frankly, because people who spent their whole life in government, you don't want leading you in government. I know only Nixon could go to China. I, I'm familiar with the concept, but uh, this is not that. Um, you can't spend your life 30 years uh, in government and then turn around and help. You're too connected to government. Uh, and we're not even you know, trying to flex like the 60s, you know, 300 guys running around with AR-15s in one city. Like, it's going to all work out well for you. It was just the stupidest move. It put us all in a lot of problems. Wiped out a lot of men. And I remember them being carted off as a boy. And here I am as a man watching the next, well, they weren't the next generation. They're four generations now getting the same treatment. Yeah, so, uh, back on topic. So, Colin Kaepernick, right? We all go, you're the butter, Colin. You lead us now. I expect Colin Kaepernick not to go get guns because then I'd be like, wow, how fucking wrong was I? I expect him to go, wow, what do we need? Who do we need to speak for us? The first thing we should do is take a moratorium on voting. Oh, man, the Democratic Party would lose their shit if all black people did one or two things I think we should do. Sit out voting for a, a cycle, and a cycle is two years, mind you. Um, and then vote in the block. Like, so if Colin Kaepernick was the leader, and he said, okay, me and my advisors thought about this. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, the advisors. I love Colin Kaepernick. I hate the advisors. Ugh. We are going to vote everything uh, that the Republicans want for the next, you know, not even, just for this cycle. I would want to know why. But I would still do it because unity has loyalty in it, but it also has duty in it, right? I I am I support you and your leadership, so I'm I'm bound to you by that. What's going on now is everybody's more of a critic than a soldier. So if for instance, if I was running it and I said we are all the last election, we are not gonna vote for Hillary Clinton, or we are going to vote for Hillary Clinton. You're going to get a lot of pushback and blowback and, man, I do whatever I want. And, the, and that kind of thing, everybody being a lone wolf, every and, and this is what hip-hop sells you, right? Fuck everybody, I'm the man, I don't need anybody. And that precludes unity. So I tell my nephew, the idea of you doing whatever you want, because sometimes he, I, I love him, I love him, he does this when I get in his head, he goes... Because mind you, I'm his uncle, so he, he he's got extra protocols for me. So, like I said, I just give him airplane rides, even though now he's a bigger dude. So all these nice feelings go back to his adolescence and his boyhood, and we've had conversations since he was a little guy about you know the world. So even as I get older and I get a little off the reservation. The first people who give you room 
to be crazy, if that makes sense, is family, right? Uh, strangers would just be like, dumb at him. You know, I expect to lose all my friends before I lose my first family member because I'm not that family member who, you know, sells drugs or gets family into trouble. The house doesn't get raided. I don't uh, borrow and, you know, don't do any of that. I don't have weird friends who come over and, and make noise and upset your neighbors. I'm just, I've always been sort of a weird loner-ish social butterfly, right? I love you until I want to be by myself, then I want to be by myself. Uh, I forgot where I was taking this, but yeah, so I'm, I'm the weird leader who wants you to vote for Hillary Clinton and you say no, and you'd have to, you'd have to, you'd have to. Well, how would I know? That's where Mr. Kaepernick, if he was a leader, we're using him as a, as a fill in. I don't, I don't want to get young Mr. Kaepernick in any trouble, but I like Kaepernick because he, what he did, he did for all of us. And here's, here's the mark. They attacked him and they got rid of him and now no one is kneeling. You know what I'm saying? How is he not the strongest thing there? Everyone in that union, every football player is a fucking joke. Colin Kaepernick, if he is not head of something that you all go, wow, he took a bullet for us, you're a joke. I mean, God, the American military recognizes people who, who do things for them. And that should be the, the, that should be the, the jumping off point for an American boy. I'm not saying get guns and storm, but the idea of growing up knowing what loyalty and unity is and who the best men in the country are supposed to be. I'm not saying that they are, because mind you, I met a lot of dill holes in the who were fucking military people. But I'm running on, I'm not running on that. You're always going to have that. There's no 100% in nature or in any other group. You understand? If I walked out of here as a straight man and asked every woman that I passed, would you like to sleep with me? Sure, I'm going to get slapped a couple of times. Sure, I'm going to get cursed out. But I'm I might get a yeah. I might get, I'm definitely going to get a yeah. Right? Because people are different. And you, you never know what people's motivations are. And... You know, some people don't mind having sex with you on the first date or, by the way, after it's all over, what is your name again? You know, th this is the nature of people. So you're not going to get a hard, fast anything. You're just not. Um, so look, all right, so the idea is you follow a great man and you help him build something you don't ask him to solve all your problems while you sit on your couch and xbox it i think kaepernick gave up a lot i do believe that we will unite in my lifetime in my lifetime i do believe it will likely be someone very similar to mr kaepernick but not not an angry dill hole, not a go get your gun guy. We've all seen ISIS fuck up cities. Nobody's trying to live in a, a, a you know, a hussed out, gray, bombed out anything. And the move bombing, and it was a bombing, and it was a racial bombing against black people destroyed a lot of Philadelphia, a lot of it. And nobody went to, nobody ever goes to jail. So. Under my situation, under my situation, under my scenario, Mr. Kaepernick would be looked after, protected, and given, you know, a wide berth to, to set this up, which is we need schools, we need banks, and uh, we need sports venues and Cub Scouts and Little League to catch them. Because, you know, once you break them, it's hard to fix them. I mean, you can fix them, but it's hard. Just don't break them. And I think you can do that by sports leagues. Uh, we need our own schools and colleges because the education system is not the same. I'm pretty sure a lot of people just got a pass because they could play basketball or football or something. Whereas other people who should have gotten scholarships are driving buses for Walmart. You know? So... Colin Kaepernick, space, 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 space. 
that Jesse dude, sorry, space, uh, I'm sorry, space, 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 uh, Colin Powell, space, 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 Jesse dude, space, 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 Barack Obama, honorable mention, honorable mention, honorable mention, honorable mention, the honorable mention. Um, I'm going to get some blowback because there's no women on this list. But, uh, the only person I would put on this list is living in Cuba. And Barack Obama should have pardoned her, but Barack Obama is that guy. So, in conclusion, uh, the only person on the scene who I would risk my fucking life for is Colin Kaepernick, a sports guy. And you may go, fuck a sports guy. I go, eh, Donald Trump was a reality guy. <laughs> you know, it's that. You know, don't look gift horses in the mouth. And the thing is, when your champion rises, every society supports the champion, but black people in America. We treat it like it's a soap opera. We'll watch it go down. I think we want somebody to show up and solve these problems. So I don't think these problems can be solved in the way, uh, the classic ways. Like, for instance, I'm for reparations. Uh, and you're not going to send everybody a check. That's just stupid. Some of these people got here two weeks ago from, from uh, the Caribbean. It's ridiculous. What you can do is fix it in the name of the ancestor and the the ancestors that we lost, and you can do that by opening up, by my count, five universities, uh, two in New York, four in the South. I'm sorry, what did I say? Five, uh, five regional universities, right? Two in New York, three in the South, uh, two in California. Uh, what was the other ones? Where are the other black people? <laughs> but but the idea is that they be up and they, they do five things. They do banking, law, um, medicine, uh, social, um, uh, uh, social psychiatry, the idea of, of, of not group think, not psychiatry from one person, but the idea of social psychiatry of, of uh, dog on it. What is going on with my brain? Um, that and there'd be a... Uh, you know, it's funny. I have a book with all this written down. And I've been writing this crap in this book for about, I want to say, a few years now. And every time it gets full, I kind of get another book and cut and paste and edit out. But yeah, that's, this, my, my, life is, my life is cluttered because I'm clutterful. Uh, so yeah, so small... Um, not banks, what do they call them? Clubs, those are, mm, mm, it. the banks where you open and, uh, oh, what are they called? They're called, oh, <laughs> it, it'll come back to me. But essentially they're like, they're like club banks. So uh, if I opened a comic book, and me and all my comic book friends will go to the comic book bank and uh dang nabbit I cannot believe it's not coming back to me anyway. Uh you need those things and they'll they'll uh they'll the US is reportedly going to step down for let's just stop that. They're gonna Credit unions. Thank you. Woo 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 I don't know what is going on with me today. Uh, yeah, so you can open up credit unions and things like this. Um, for people who don't have any money, we generate a shit ton of money. For us to get robbed like this by people who come in from Europe tonight and go into the family banking business and rob us blind is just, it's unacceptable. It's, the day for that is dead. And uh, yeah. You have to do something for your ancestors who were thrown over the side of ships. You have to do something for these young boys who will die tomorrow and have the media show up and tell you why it's perfectly all right that they're dead. And that's essentially what the media does. So, yeah, the media is fake news. It has been fake news for a minute. Um, Donald Trump, whew, that press conference was a boss. 
Uh, you may not like him, but he he is he is a unique character, and I like him. He's not like anything I've seen before. Having said that, I'm watching the media run at him for uh, a solid two years now, treating him like he's a black teen who sold a purse. I got to tell you, that thing on the, the lawn today, today, what is today's date? So you can look it up. Uh, June, June 15th, it lasted 20 minutes. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was what you want your president to do, to take questions impromptu, any place, and defend him and his worldview versus having to run off when he gets tired. These people showed the President of the United States no respect. And he was like, hey, yo, hey, I'm not the waiter. You know what I mean? He, he was very he was very on point. I, I, I respect it. I respect it. I will criticize everybody in my government, but I always have a little more uh, respect for my president. I don't like that it's, they disrespected Jimmy Carter. I remember that. I thought it was traitorous. And then they kept doing it. They disrespected Obama. You know, they're, they're, they were short with Clinton, although Clinton was sort of, you know, it's just, look, you could, you could have clicked on that. You could have criticized Clinton for what he did without the nasty venom. And now here we are. People are acting like they can't wait to start a revolution. And I tell people all the time, go ahead. Be a two-time loser, you shitbag. Do you really think that we're not going to... Man, this place is going to... You're not going to be the hilt of Afghanistan. We are one nation. Get your shit together. Period. As for us black folk on this black podcast, we have to fix our shit. At this point, I really don't think it's the government keeping us down. I think it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. People don't believe, so they don't try. You know, I remember this story of an elephant who uh, was a baby elephant and they changed it to a post uh, and it stopped trying to break this this chain because it was a, a it was little and it couldn't break it. And they kept that elephant on that giant that giant elephant on this little bicycle chain for like 20 years because it got into his head where and it could easily have snapped this chain and it didn't. Because it it stopped trying, and that's that's the thing. So yeah, I know it's a it's a hard lift, but hey, here's the magic. I tell people, they've erased our history, so we can build our future. You know, if we want to wear kimonos, fuck you. We can wear kimonos. What are you gonna tell us? Uh huh. You know, we want to wear cowboy hats and blue. We can wear all that, but at the end of the day, we have to chart our own course together. And uh, there are too many people in this country who aren't feeling us, who don't speak up, who buy up the land and the property after they killed us. I mean, New York was had the largest black population, and it doesn't anymore. And that was on purpose. So, yeah, it's hard for me to vote Democrat anymore. It really is. I feel like you think I'm stupid, Democrats, and I'm not stupid. So, uh, yeah, the midterms, I'm watching them, and I'm going to try and uh, get as many people to pay attention as possible. Um, but, yeah, Colin Kaepernick is sort of like the new version of what you want. Smart, um, full of integrity, and... Uh, Seeking a simple whoosh for fairness. So they were like, no, fuck you, nigga, no fairness. <laughs> the players' union was like, mm, yeah, it's on our to do list until then. You know what? Nobody should catch a check until you handle this. You really. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Anywho, it's been an hour. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been the Armor Intergalactic Podcast. I am True S. Armor, where we here at Armor Intergalactic talk about all things under the sun, ours, or their sun. 
in our galaxy or theirs. And uh, right now we're talking about our galaxy in our region of the Milky Way. And we're talking about Colin Kaepernick. I could probably go on for another 20 minutes, but it's been an hour. So we're going to end it here. Uh, if you start thinking about these podcasts, that means they're sliding in your subconscious. If they're sliding into your subconscious, that means somewhere in you, you know full well. I'm, I don't know what you're doing, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. But whatever it is, you've got enough room in you to move toward unity in some small way. And like I said, you ain't got to show, give anybody money or da 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 da. Because once that happens, people are going to start getting wiggy with the money. And Kaepernick doesn't need to get wiggy with the money. He doesn't. Um, if, if I started something and I was the leader of a group today, uh, I would raise money to hire a lawyer to incorporate it correctly and an accountant to watch it long term. And then I would have uh, monthly disclosures. But once people start getting control of stuff, they don't want to tell you anything. Oh, yeah, just, we just want to keep money, but we don't need to tell you. And before you know it, you're outside and they're standing next to yet another 40 year politician telling you how it's going to be fine. And then that person's telling you, yeah, we all need to go to the polls. This is all the Democrats tell you. This is all black leaders tell you to go to the polls, to march. And to go to the polls, march and go to the polls, march and go to the polls, march and go to the polls. You know what happens if you don't go to the polls and you don't march? They have no power. No one wants them at the White House. Yeah. So I say think very carefully about who you vote for. I never vote for uh, judges when I go there because I know full well that judges are always a problem. And I don't know them well enough to know if they're honest or not. And, uh... I never look up their records because I'm not, I've got a life, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but if we had this organization, someone could look up their records. I'm just saying. All right. That's it for me. Uh, to my religious friends, God is good. And he's watching you. To my atheist friends, you are made of stardust. I expect better shit from you. And to those who don't know, fucking pick a side. See you next Friday.